Let's pray. Our precious and loving Heavenly Father, we want to thank you for your goodness and mercy this morning. Thank you for granting us grace to gather here this afternoon, Lord Jesus, to worship you, to hear from you, to have our souls and spirits be ministered unto by the Holy Ghost. We thank you that you've taken care of us. We thank you, Lord, that you've chosen us in these last days. We thank you, Lord Jesus, that there is something you've put in our hearts to recognize your voice and to even desire to walk in it. We commit this service in your hands that you guide us, bless our singing, our worship, our thanksgiving. Receive us unto yourself, Lord Jesus, as we commit this service in your hands for the glory of your name. In Jesus Christ's name we pray. Amen. Amen. Let's just sing this song, I have decided to follow Jesus. Amen. song he is Jehovah Lord God Almighty he is Jehovah he is the God of all creation amen
How many want that old time religion? Amen. Let's just sing that song. my way every day with love. Amen. We want the love of God. Amen. Yeah. 
As we invite the deacons to come and pray for the tithes and the offerings. Amen. Fill my way every day with love as I walk with that heavenly If there's because there's some complaint about the air cons, if it's too cold or it's too hot, let us know. We can reduce some of them, uh, the pressure of uh, freezing. Let us pray. Mungu Baba yetu katika jina lako Yesu Kristo. Tunakuja mbele za uso wako baba tukijua ya kwamba ni hapo kuna kuwa mahali pa kukimbilia bwana. And Lord your presence is the only place that we can run to. Baba katika ulimwengu tulio ndani yake baba hakuna tena hata mahali bwana pa kutia mgulu wala pa kutia macho mfalme rehema. Lord in this world there's not a stable place where we can set our foot. Ni katika wewe tu baba inakuwa mahali pa kukimbilia Yesu Kristo. It's only in you that's the only hiding place. Na njoo kwa maana bwana o mfalme rehema wakati ulituumba kwa mfano wako bwana. And Lord when you created us. Ukatuacha baba ukatuleta hapa ulimwenguni ukatukakuwa na sehemu yako ndani yetu Yesu. Lord you created us with a part of you in us. Na njoo kwa maana bwana wakati tumeanguka kwenye bustani ya Eden ili kugarimu wewe bwana. And Lord that's why when we fell in the garden of Eden it took you to come back and save us. Kwa sababu tulikuwa tayari na sehemu yako ndani mwetu. Because Lord we was part of you. Wewe Bwana ulio Jehovah mkuu. Lord you are great Jehovah. Ukaacha mamlaka yako kaja hapo ulimwenguni. You left all your glory in heaven. Ukuja kutafuta dada yangu kwa tafuta ndugu yangu. You came to find my brother and my sister. Na njoo kwa maana katika katika hii kizazi cha mwisho cha Laodikia And Lord in this last age of Laodicea ukatutumia sauti yako Bwana You sent us your voice Sauti ya Malaki 4 The voice of Malachi 4 Ili Baba ipate kukusanisha Lord that it would bring together Ili Baba tupate kusikia mahusia yako That Lord would be here to hear voice Kile tuwe tulikuwa tukipoteza katika bustani ya Eden And Lord that's what we lost in the garden of Eden Ili Bwana tupate tena kurudishiwa kwa Bwana But Lord you're bringing us back to it now Nabii anakiita kama vile total deed and Brabranam calls it a total deed or the title deed. Tayari umeturudishia nayo Bwana. And Lord you've given it back to us. 
Baba tunakuja tena mbele za uso wako baba tukileta watoto wako wa kike na wa kiume bwana and lord in your presence are you children men and women walio wazaifu walio wahitaji wa mwili kama vile wa kiroho lord they have needs in the body and in the spirit baba uwajibu kulingana na mapenzi yako lord we pray that you answer their needs na kuna kwa wale wale kutoa cha cha sadaka na cha kumi and lord there are those who have given tithes and offerings bwana uwabariki lord bless them wala waja kutolea bwana Lord those who have not given baba pia nao wabariki bwana Lord also bless them na tunaleta mioyo yetu bwana ili bwana umfale upate kuitayarisha kusikia neno lako la uzima and lord we pray that you will just prepare this place and our hearts to hear your word baba tunakualika kwa sababu ulisema ya kwamba mali kuna kwa wawili watatu kwenye jina lako unakuwa miongoni mwao lord we call on you because you said where there's two or three gathered that's where you'll be na wewe ni Mungu wa neno lako and you are god of your word hata ndugu mmoja atatudumia bwana tunamleta mkononi mwako mmoja upate kumtayarisha bwana and lord the brother who will give the word we put him in your hands lord that you will prepare the word kile kiata kile atakio kinena Mungu iwe ni wewe kinena ndani yake Yesu lord that when he speaks it will be you speaking tunaacha yote ni chini ya damu yako ni katika jina lako Yesu Kristo uliyo bwana na mwokozi wetu amen we put it all in your name pray in jesus name amen Amen praise the Lord Amen We don't have any request for special singing I don't know what's happening with the singers Amen uh, We should sing for the Lord Amen We want to hear songs from the Philippines we want to hear songs from the Congo Amen If you have your song you can just let the song leaders you know and then we can translate the song so that it will be a blessing to everyone amen don't wait for someone to sing because that someone is also waiting for you amen so i trust the lord will help us and we can all sing for the lord amen let's just sing the song praise the lord praise the lord to god be the glory uh, great things he has done amen God be the glory great things he has done so loved he the world that he gave us his son who healed dead his life and atonement for sin and opened the life gate that all may go in oh Praise the Lord praise the Lord let the earth hear his voice praise the Lord praise the Lord let the people rejoice oh come to the father through Jesus the son and give him the glory great things he great things he had taught us great things he had done and great our rejoice through Jesus the son but pure and higher and greater will be a wonder transport when Jesus oh praise the Lord praise the Lord let the earth hear his voice praise the Lord praise the Lord let the people rejoice oh come to the father through Jesus the son and give him the glory great things he has done all perfect redemption the purchase of blood to every believer the promise of god the yes 
greatest offender would truly be least. The moment from Jesus a pardon received. Oh, praise the Lord, praise the Lord. Let the earth hear His voice. Praise the Lord, praise the Lord. Let the Let's sing the song, When I See the Blood, I'll Pass Over You. Amen. Christ our Redeemer died on the cross, died for Paid all is due. Sprinkle your soul with blood of the Lamb, and I will pass, will pass over you. When I see the blood. Judgment is coming, oh judgment is coming, oh will be there, each one receiving justly his due, hide in the saving, sin cleansing blood.
Hallelujah. Can we all stand? Amen. As we prepare our hearts for the preaching of the word this afternoon. Amen. Let's just sing this song. Only believe all things are possible. Amen. Whatever you need, all things are possible. Amen. Lord, I believe.
Hallelujah. Amen. As we invite Brother Johnny, let's just sing the song, I love him, I love him, because he first loved me. Amen. I love him. I love him because he first loves me. Bless you, saints. Shalom. Good morning. Spiritually speaking, peace. That's what the prophet said to the church. It's lovely to be in the household of the Lord today. It's good to be amongst believers, uh, believers of this end time message, filled with the Holy Ghost, serving the Lord. I won't take too much of your time, just a couple of things to mention. Um, firstly, as we all know, Brother uh, Michael travelled to Melbourne this week, uh, last week for this weekend uh, to minister at Brother Quasi um, at the family camp there. So that's where he is over this weekend. Um, the, I was told that the meetings uh, began very well and I know that they finished very well. Um, it was a, a blessing to the church. Um, the, the church was right behind brother, pulling, receiving, uh, so it was wonderful. Um, I think he comes back tomorrow. So we just want to keep Brother Michael in our prayers. Uh, I also just wanted to mention um, that yesterday uh, was the cleaning day for, for the church here. Uh, last week we had, uh, Brother Michael had announced that there was a little cleaning roster on the table. And um, when, when I checked it, um, there weren't too many names on it. So... Uh, by Friday, I was preparing myself to clean this place by myself <laughs> and with any other person that had put the name on. Um, I made an announcement on um, Friday at the service and um, there were a number of brethren that came yesterday. So I just wanted to say thank you very much for uh, coming and cleaning the church. Um, even, you know, the first brother that came, I asked him, where did you want to start? And he said, oh, I'll start in the toilet. And I thought, a, a man after my own, own heart. <laughs> so he started there. I started in this toilet. And then a few brothers came and they, the vacuuming was done. The kitchen was done. By quarter past 10, uh, 10.30, we were out. So thank you very much for coming. Um, the cleaning roster is at the table there, so if you feel that you would like to help, please, uh, if you could put your name down. It also helps us to see what to expect for the next, the next cycle. Um, I just also wanted to mention uh, Sunday school. We are scheduled to start Sunday school next week. Next Sunday is our first lesson back. Um, I would have liked to have communicated a bit more to the teachers and to the parents um, before this time. Unfortunately, I've been a bit snowed under with, with other matters. Um, so my intention is I'm going to try and communicate during the week to at least the teachers, uh, the parents, and just try and give the teachers a bit of uh, direction and program uh, of where we're headed this, this year. 
Uh, so my apologies for that. Um, but my intention is this week to do that. Brother Paul um, is not with us today. He last minute got called out to a, a call out, so he, he's not here. We have a, a prayer request. We have a prayer request, Brother Muchi. And if anyone else has anything that they would like to be remembered before the Lord as we pray uh, now for the service and this prayer request, um, keep that in your heart before the Lord as we pray. And then I will introduce uh, Brother Pardon. Brother Pardon is ministering for us um, this afternoon. So we're privileged to have Brother Pardon ministering. And I was thinking about that little story in the message of the little bear uh, getting into the prophet's tent and coming out with honey all over him. And then the other bear coming and just licking that honey off. So we believe our, our brother has been in the prophet's tent under that third pool ministry. He's coming out, honey all over, and, and let's benefit and let's lick as much as we can. So as we commit this service and the prayer request, uh, let's, let's bow our heads and speak to the Lord. Dear gracious Heavenly Father, Lord Jesus, truly, the day star, Father, has risen in our hearts according to prophecy, Lord. And in our hearts, Lord Jesus, there is a shalom. A new day has broken for the people of God. After a long period of the church ages, Lord, finally, shalom. A going in between light, Father, taking us from time, crossing over into eternity, Lord. And Heavenly Father, as we stand here, Lord Jesus, with this shalom in our heart, Lord. Father, we approach your throne of grace, Lord. By the precious blood of Jesus Christ that has come to us, Lord, in the form of that bleeding word and washed away all of our unbelief, Lord, that you may present to yourself a glorious church without spot, and without wrinkle, standing upon your word at the end time. Lord, a glorious branch, just as your scripture said. And Father God, as we now settle ourselves down, as we, we move ourselves out of the way, Lord, we desire, Lord Jesus, that you would come, Father, and be the true minister, minister Lord, of this sanctuary, Father, the sanctuary of our hearts, Lord, going down into our hearts, Lord, and touching us, Lord, in a way that no man can, but only you can, Father. And we'll be careful, Lord Jesus, to give you all the honour and the glory. Heavenly Father, we have prayer requests here, Lord. We have needs, Lord Jesus. We just want to commit, Father, our brother Muchi into your hands, Lord. Father, we lift him up before the throne of grace, Lord. We know, Lord Jesus, that you know our brother. You know what's in his heart, Father. You know the needs that he has, Lord Jesus. And we just pray, Father, as we lift him up before you, Lord, as the church of the living God, that you would meet all of our brother's needs, meet his expectations and go beyond his expectations, Father, that you may fill his heart, Lord Jesus, with love, Father, overflowing, Lord Jesus for the praises and honour of Jesus Christ. We commit him into your hands, Lord God. We also commit and remember our precious brother Paul having to be called out today, Lord. I know, Lord Jesus, his desire was to be here, Father. And I pray, God, that you would go with him, Father, in him, Lord Jesus, minister to him, Lord Jesus, and help him, Father, at this time. We also want to commit brother Michael and his family into your hands, Lord. We thank you, Lord Jesus, for the blessing that Brother Michael was and is to the, to the saints across the way, Father. We thank you for that, Father. And we just ask, Lord Jesus, that you would grant him safe traveling mercies as he makes his way back home, Lord. And now, Lord Jesus, we commit the preaching of the word into your hands, Father. We have tried, Lord, to get ourselves in the right atmosphere, in the right environment, Lord Jesus. And we just pray now, Lord, as the word comes forth, Father, 
that we would receive the word, that something special would come down into our hearts, Lord, that we would leave knowing that we've received something from you, Lord Jesus, that every single time we go back and look at it, it's still there. And we look at it again, it's still there. And we look at it again, Lord Jesus, and it keeps on opening up for us, Lord. So I just pray, Father, that you would be mindful of, of us now, Lord, and we commit this the, the next part of the service into your hands, Lord, in the precious name of our Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. Just while we're standing, can we sing, Can't You See While I'm So Happy? Brother Pardon, if you'd like to come, please. Oh, can't you see so happy I've accepted the word of the Lord the revealed word that was spoken by the prophet you all saints in the name of the Lord Jesus this afternoon. We just want to read a portion of the scripture so that we can take our seats. <clears throat> we are reading from the book of Hebrews chapter 4. If we are all there, we are going to read verse 14. The Bible reads, Seeing then that we have a great high priest that is passed into the heavens, Jesus, the Son of God, let us hold fast our profession. Let us pray. Gracious Heavenly Father, when it was said, who can open the book, no man was worthy. There is still no man worthy to open the book and to break these seals thereof. But we know that you have made a way that you would speak back to your people. And by that, O oh God, we pray that even now, Lord, may you come down. And then take this time of fellowship that we have set aside to be in service for you. And Lord, just through these scriptures that we have written down, open them to our understanding, Lord, that we may have more fellowship with you, that in our walk we may be so strong, being encouraged and strengthened, or that we may be lifted up. We commit this service, Father, back into your hands. Let all the honor and the glory be given back to thee. For thou art it in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ, we pray. Amen. Saints, you may take your seats. I would like to thank uh, the pastor, Brother Michael, for the opportunity to share the word. Um, I know he's not here, but I just want to appreciate that. 
Uh, we would like to speak today on the thought that uh, I spoke last time on the priesthood of Melchizedek. Uh, these things were some of the things that were uh, part of the thoughts. We didn't go far with it. So I just want to speak today on the subject that I called Melchizedek priesthood. Uh, the Melchizedek, the high priest of our perfection. Our thought is main descended in time. Our thought today, it's a broad thing. Perfection is a broad subject. It comes from this way to that way. But we are on our thought centered on time. I wrote there, time shall be no longer. I spoke some time ago and I said I've wondered a long time why the scripture said time shall be no longer. Those that remember it might remember that. I say that I remember it myself. And I said, well, because there's no one else coming after him, so there's nothing to look forward to. But still there was something that was not very complete. So somehow the Lord made a way that I would find a little bit more from this honey in the comb. So that's what I'm thinking to share with you today. <clears throat> we all know where the thought comes from. Time shall be no longer. We're going to read again from the book of Hebrews chapter 10. A few readings. You bear with me. Chapter 10, verse 12. That will be the next slide. They can put it on. The scripture reads, But this man, after he had offered one sacrifice for sins, forever, sat down on the right hand of God. From henceforth expecting, till his enemies... Be mad his footstool. For by one offering he hath perfected forever them that are sanctified. Whereof the Holy Ghost also is a witness to us. For after that he had said before, This is the covenant that I will make with them after those days, saith the Lord. I will put my laws into their hearts and in their minds will I write them. Oh, when this is done, he says, and their sins and their iniquities will I remember no more. I just like that. The scripture, verse 13 says, verse 12, it says, this man, when he had offered up one offering, he sat down on the right hand of the Father. We know where he went to sit down. We spoke about the Melchizedek priesthood, how he was the high priest that went before God for us. And he took our sins and appeared before God, dripping with blood, pay, having paid the price. And there he sat, declaring to God that I have paid the price. But there was coming a day. The scripture says, while he sat there, he was waiting for time. That was the day when his enemies would be made his footstool. Amen. We're going to read again. The Bible then says, for by one offering, he hath perfected forever them that are sanctified. Now there's something there on verse 14. The ones that are perfected are the ones that have already been sanctified. Now we know how we come to sanctification. We come to sanctification when we start from justification. And we know how justification comes. So these are things that are just laying the background of where we are going. So 
them that are sanctified are the ones that are going to be perfected. Amen. Let us go and read. Oh, no, no, let, let me finish here. And it says on verse 16, the Holy Ghost being the witness, testifying that I will have this covenant with them after those days. So there's a people that are known of God for whom you will have a covenant to make with. And for sure, as sure as he made a covenant with Abraham, an unconditional covenant, he also makes an unconditional covenant with this. Because he says, I will put, there is no condition to this covenant as we read it here. He says, I will put my laws into their hearts and into their minds will I write them. And when I have done that, their sins and their iniquities. We know sin and we know iniquity. These two are different. But we know they put you down to jail if God does not take you out of it. But he says, their sins and their iniquities will I remember no more. Amen. Now I want to read uh, Revelation chapter 10 because these are our backgrounds. Because, all right, I just want to read that. I'll say something there. The Bible says it's a fair long reading to verse 7. <clears throat> the Bible says, And I saw another mighty angel come down from heaven, clothed with a cloud, and a rainbow was upon his head, and his face was as it were the sun, and his feet as pillars of fire. And he had in his hand a little book open, and he said, his right hand, his right foot upon the sea and his left foot upon the earth. So, when we read Hebrews chapter 10, Paul says, he sat on the right hand of the Father, waiting till his enemies be made his footstool. Here we are looking, we are reading on this scripture. This is a very peculiar scripture to us as message believers. We are reading on this scripture and it says, this mighty angel coming down from heaven, as he landed on the earth, he put his foot to, his right foot on the earth, on the, his right foot on the sea, and his left foot on the earth. So, these people are speaking the same language. They are looking at this, they are speaking of the same person. They are looking at something that is going to happen. Both of them, they are speaking of the same thing here. Because this one, he is sitting there waiting. And John, when he sees him come down, this mighty angel, he has to lend a foot so that his enemy might be considered now set down under his foot. It has been made a footstool. All right. And he cried, with a loud voice as when a lion roareth. And when he had cried, seven thunders uttered their voices. And when the seven thunders had uttered their voices, I was about to write, and I heard a voice from heaven saying unto me, seal up those things which the seven thunders uttered, and write them not. And the angel which I saw stand upon the sea and upon the earth, he lifted up his hand to heaven. And when he did, he swear by him that liveth forever and ever, who created heaven and the things that therein are, and the earth and the things that therein are, and the sea and the things which are therein. He swore by himself. And he said that there should be time no longer. But in the days of the voice of the seventh angel, when ye shall begin to sound, the mystery of God should be finished, as he hath declared to his servants the prophets. Now we know we are reading this scripture, and whenever Brother Branham read this scripture, or maybe I can put that out, we read this scripture because we believe in this day God send us a prophet. And we are not trying to put things together or join them up, 
We know the scripture of Malachi 4. It clearly tells us that this one, when he comes, he is ushering a people into the millennium. Because the Bible says, when this has happened, the wicked shall be trodden underfoot by the righteous. You shall walk upon the face of the earth as calves of the stall. Brother Branham, when he reads this scripture, when he comes to show us this scripture, he ties it to this scripture. So this scripture shows us that when time is no longer, obviously this is the day of the message of that prophet of Malachi 4. Because he is coming to declare the judgment of the earth, the Lord's judgment upon the face of the earth, because this is the message of the end. We have nothing else to look forward to. This has happened before. Amen. So time should be no longer. That's where I took it from. <clears throat> I'm going to read you a quotation. Uh, but before that, I'm still laying a bit of a background here. I, I put that, because I went to find out. Sometime I thought, so what is time? Really, what is time? I, I, I didn't find really something satisfying. So I was reading and I saw this, bish, this, pot, uh, this part of um, an expression where they say in physics, it was in, an, in, in, on, on, in English, they say, but in physics, the definition of time is simple. So I took this one. There's many that you can get. But I liked this one, so I took this one. In physics, the definition of time is simple. Time is change. Or the interval over which change your case. I, I, I highlighted that impossible because they say it is impossible to know that time has passed unless something has changed. Now, in the creation before time began, God was in heaven. He had Adam and Eve on earth. And God would always come down and have fellowship with them. He, this was not considered as time. God would come down in the cool of the day. Yes, but God, now we are going to hear and find out what the prophet says. So this is why I liked it. So God would come down, go back up, come down, and have fellowship with his children, and come back up, come down. It was just a continuous cycle. And it was going to be a continuous cycle, which was going to remain. But then something happened. But then something happened. Okay. And how marvelous it is that this is found in the message perfection. And Brother Branham is explaining time in the message perfection. And when I saw that, I enjoyed it. Brother Branham says here, yeah, the message perfection. I'm sure it's there. Now, beginning again now with the first verse, let's go back. Last Sunday, we thought we would get to the subject of perfection. But then God is back and got us and got foreknowledge, showing us way that before the world was ever formed. How many was here on last Sunday? Uh, how many was here last Sunday? Let's see your hand. Did you get it? Before the world was ever formed, we were placed in Christ. Think of it. Before the world was ever formed, we were placed in Christ. God being infinite, who cannot lie, cannot speak anything contrary, knows everything just as perfect at the beginning as he is at the ending. And just as perfect at the end as he was at the beginning. God is endless like eternity. You can never find 
the corner of a perfect circle, you could run and run through the ages and eternity, and there would never, never, never be an end to it. And that's the way God is. And when he befaced was God, which always was, he was infinite, perfect to begin with, and will always be the same. He never can change. He is perfectly the same. The next slide. Now, now this is where I got this thought. Now, this great chain of perfection was broken by time space. This great chain of perfection. So, even though God would come down and have fellowship and go back up, and it lived, and lived like that. There was no time, so we don't know how long that lasted. Because there's no time to it. It was a millennium. It was eternity anyway. So there's no beginning. There's no end to it. And as it stayed like that, it was eternity. But one day something happened, and it brought time. So time does not originate from God as he's thought. Probably permissibly because we know we were pl placed in Christ before the foundation of the world as God's plan of redemption. I, I, we take note of that. But let's take this. He says, Brother Brown then goes to say, Let, time came because of sin. So we know when time starts then when he says that. There was no time before that. So now we know when time started. But the scripture that we read in Revelation chapter 10, it said, when this great and mighty angel came down with a little book open in his hand, he cried with a loud voice as he swore by himself, time shall be no longer. You can see this scripture is the scripture of the end time. You can see how Brother Branham was such a prophet that it, it is beyond any shadow of doubt that God sent a prophet upon the face of the earth. Because Revelation chapter 10, what it is speaking, it is speaking exactly what Malachi 4 has been sent to do. Not two ways about it. A vindicated prophet. And he says, yeah. Let's draw a picture of time. <laughs> so this is a lecture, you see. And the subject is perfection. And he says, let's draw a picture of time. Let's see a perfect circle. Forever, forever. And then, all of a once, sin dropped in. And put a little, as my wife calls it, a little hickey or a loop drop in the chain. So it comes down now. Eternity continues on. But it's not in its perfect condition. Here is a little gap down, breaks over this way, goes out this way. God, now this is very important. God had to do that because Satan caused it. And it dropped down to a space of time. And I highlighted that because that's very important. For the trying and the perfecting and the purging of the lost. For our trying and our perfecting, and also for the winding up away, the getting rid of those that are not His. Because He's preparing to draw back that circle to eternity. So He has to get rid of everything else. Time brought this, but when it comes back to eternity, He must get rid of it. So, Trying. The trial, trying of our faith, it worketh patience, and fa patience is a virtue. So when we are tried, it is God's purpose and will that we come to this earth to be tried and to be perfected. You see how he tried Abraham? And he come back to him and he said, Now, Abraham, walk before me and be thou perfect. He wanted, after all this time of trial, to get him to perfection. And God has always required us to be perfect. He said that in his way. So he's drawing back that circle. He's pulling back that chain. All right, let's see. 
I, I enjoyed this one. He says, so that's very important. It dropped into a space of time. Eternity continues on now. Because God cannot be subject to time. Eternity continues on. There's one that controls. Because if, if God had failed there, then everything would have failed. Then there's nothing. He couldn't be the creator then. So eternity must continue. Permissive will works around to, to bring back everything to his perfect will. As Brother Branham says, God was going to call his children from the dust. He's still calling the children from the dust. But you see, you've got to catch the revelation of how now he is calling his children from the dust. Dust are we of the earth, but we are being called from the dust of the earth. How? By the spoken word. You see, the same thing. That was his perfect intention. He had to do this to manifest his glory. Amen. I just like that. Amen. So, he says, now look. He says, that God, by his sovereign grace, might someday lift that little hickey or gap back into the perfect circle. Then she rolls on just the same. Things have got to come to an end. This world order has got to come to an end one day. Then she rolls back the same. Eternity to eternity. Amen. Time. Now. Time is this little loop. So if you can go to my next uh, slide. I drew something up. I just tried to make it like the way I was understanding it. Of course, it's too far from me to keep doing some other things so that I can write on it. But if, if there was a, this, a, a board here, I would do that. So I, I drew that up. So, and I said time, because sin came in. Time came in because of sin. That's why I put that. That's me that. If it doesn't make sense to you, don't worry about it. That's me, because that's not Brother Branham. I don't know what he drew. I was trying to understand what he was drawing. So, but you see, that gap there is where he has got to pull it back. That loop there is that what is that which Brother Branham is saying, the little hickey or the gap. But he is going someday to pull it back up. So God had all these things well set. When everything was happening, he had everything well set. Do you know what? One day, the Lord Jesus Christ, the, the disciples spoke to him about the, John the Baptist. And he said, of all them that are born of a woman, there's none that is greater than John. But then he made a statement. He said, notwithstanding. He that is least in the kingdom of heaven is greater than he. There was coming someone greater because something greater was coming. You think he meant some kind of a person like me to be greater than John? <laughs> no way. He knew what he was talking. Notwithstanding, God knowing after, after the order of the prophets, there was coming a greater one. Oh, brother. You know how this scripture puts it? When it says that when, uh, uh, when Malachi 4 comes upon the face of the earth, it says, he shall come with healing in his wings. And I read that scripture and I thought, upon the face of the earth, history record, there's never been such great healing as it was in this day. Scripture just making things pure and simple but fulfilling it. He made sure that healing was such a great sign. Brother, but the scripture said it when this prophet of Malachi 4 come. He shall come spreading for these wings of healing. And when he went, brother, wherever he went, brother, you, it was such tremendous. Now if, he, if the people, if the saints and all the people of the world got so healed and all that, then, then you doubt that he was that prophet? Brother, God sent us a prophet in this day. Amen. So let's, let, let's finish reading this one. So I put that, 
just to try and illustrate my understanding of what the prophet was saying. You see? And that is time. But one day, because eternity should be rolling on. But one day, because God remains God, he does not change. And I like that. Malachi chapter 3 verse 6 says, Behold, I the Lord your God does not change. If God changed, then he wouldn't be God. And we wouldn't be going back anyway. Because God would change his mind at any time. But things remain what they are. And we are going back where we came from. That's what we are trying to talk about here. One of these days, brother. Amen. He says, Jesus was uh, from eternity to eternity. But he stepped into the time space and was made flesh and came through here in order to sanctify or put a streak of blood across this place to redeem it and connect it back with God again for all eternity. You see? Now you can all read. I'm not the divine interpreter of the word, but the one that was sent then says, that's all time is. Now, my definition for time, I took it for, from there. The other scientific definition, I, I, I don't know that. I'm not a scientific. I'm not a scientist, but I'm a believer of the word. So that's where, how I understand time. And when the Bible was talking about time, because you'll see, amen. Brother Bradham, he, he speaks about time later as we go down. And so I am, why, what, 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 what bothered me was, why is he saying this? He must know what he is talking about. Because he didn't expound it then. But you see, he had already spoken about these things. So he knew already what he was talking about. And he knew that if you would look for it, you would find it. Amen. Now the next slide. Okay, we are now in the spoken word, lifting him up out of history. Brother Branham says here, <clears throat> We are standing tonight upon the brim and watching come to pass and unfold two great scenes. And those two great scenes are these. One of them is the ending of history. And the other one is the ending of time. And many great men down through the ages has longed to see this hour that we are now approaching. And as we live in this glorious setting of the mortal sun and the breaking of eternal light, I do feel that we are living in one of the grandest ages that ever man has been permitted to live. And I highlighted that. Because it's the closing out of time and the blending in of eternity. So when he, at the end, he, now in the seventh seal, he is now saying, you see when we read, time shall be no longer. What time? What, what is he talking about? Is the message of the end. Is the gathering of the seed. It's harvest time. And he says, yeah. History only tells us what we have read and what has been and what's in the future lays in the hands of God. And we find out today that there is not too much history being written because I don't think it will ever be used. Amen? There's no reason for it. It's the end. But thank God for us because we are going back home. From home where we come from, we are going back home. Both of these great events are running into shallow waters. For instance, now you see the world order. Now he, that's what he's talking about there. He says now, how we are running out the national crisis and the national security is running into shallow water. Traveling around over the world, it seems like not only our nation, but there is no nation knows just what to do. Seems like there is a turmoil everywhere. I go to Africa, they are all afraid about, or, of an uprise among the people. 
and commun communism sweeping through the land. I go to Switzerland the same. And all the other nations which I visit, they seem to be that there is unsettled peace everywhere. Now you know our Lord predicted such a time to come. That there would be unrest among the nations. Perplexed of time. Distress between nations. Do you need to go on the ABC channel to read the news? That's what you get. There is war there. There is fighting there. There is trouble there. There, there is unrest everywhere. They, they are now, now in, the, in the Red Sea, whatever they call it, the Red Sea or something like that. And, and they are fighting. There is no peace here. Thank God we are in this environment that we are sitting under today. We have got hope tonight. Because God has already come and revealed himself, telling us it's time to come home. Amen. You, you, I, I hope this won't, uh, won't frustrate you because I've got some quotations to read. The reason is I tried to want to say, him to say that. I, I do have things to express myself, but I want to read a few things so that he can express that. So you understand, it's not me, it's him. Amen. The next slide. We listened to this tape sometime, I think about three weeks or so. <clears throat> the message, how can I overcome? He says this, we see this age that we are living in. It's one of the grandest ages of all ages. This Laodicea church age is the grandest of all church ages. Because it's the ending of time and the blending of eternity. And then it's the greatest sinful age. It's more seen in this age than there has ever been. And the powers of Satan is many times harder to fight against than it was in any age. See? Here back there in early ages, a Christian could, for his profession, being a church or belonging to Christ, could be beheaded for it. He could be killed and put out of his misery and go to meet God quickly. But now the enemy is coming in the name of the church. And it's so deceiving. This is the great age of deception. When Christ said so, the two spirits would be so close in the last days till it would deceive the very elected if it were possible. See? Remember Christ spoke of an elected people for the last day. It would deceive the very elected if it were possible. So close. The people so live. People can live a clean, holy life, not, not be sinful, adulterers, drinkers, or liars, or gamblers. They can still live above that and still not with it. Now we are just tapping into the area where we want to get to. You see? We, we, that was a background now. Huh? But we are beginning to tap into the area where we want to get to. Because I said, Melchizedek, the high priest of our perfection. The high priest is the one that goes before the people to present himself before the Lord an atonement for the people. Amen. Now, here Brother Branham is now beginning to show us that we are living in the age of deception. And if we are living in the age of dece deception, does that not tally with the scripture that we read that he was waiting till his enemies be made his footstool? Because we know when he put his right foot on the sea, when he put his left foot on the earth, these things are not just words. We know that. The right foot and the left foot, one on the sea, one on the land. Revelation chapter 13. We read that. We now know what this is talking about. It's that age of deception. You see? Because the sea was the church, the multitude and, uh, of nations and tongues and all that. Remember Revelation chapter 17? Mystery Babylon. That's that. 
the age of deception. So do you see where we are coming from? But in that age of deception, there is a people that are going to be perfected. In such a tremendous age of deception, God has made it up in himself that there's going to be a people that are going to be perfected. Because the scripture said, he hath already perfected them that are sanctified. Just waiting for that time. And when he has done that, brother, it's home going time. This is all around the end of time. Amen. Uh, I like this. He says here, verse 40, paragraph 46. This is the age of deception, right? But yet this is the age of life. Why? The personal life of Christ, where the chemical of his body, what was in him, first, under justification, the water baptism. I, I like this one too, because I've wondered, what was that justification? Someday then the Lord just, you know, when you come across this, and you see how that Paul, uh, that was Peter, when he went to Cornelius' house, and then as he was preaching the gospel, the Holy Ghost falls among them. Brother, he, say, he turns around, he says, who can forbid water? Justification. They have to come through these stages to become perfected. So when he is saying, them that are perfected, because they have already come through justification. Amen. He says here, yeah, the water baptism. So, water baptism is not just in an ideology that people come with to try and identify membership. You see how important it is? These are the stages now. And second, under the new birth of Wesley, sanctification, which cleanses. And thirdly, under the baptism of the Holy Spirit, putting that sanctified vessel into service. The word sanctify means, it's a compound Greek word which means cleaned and set aside for service. Set aside for service. Now the Holy Spirit puts it in service. Now, let me say something here. Brother Branham he has shown us three stages. He says, first, under justification. And we know the message of justification when the church was being resurrected from the dead, from the dark ages, after the, the fourth seal, when the church was dead, and it was now being resurrected, how God resurrected the church by justification. The message, the just shall live by faith, by Martin Luther. And he started from there, and he, he moved on. And they shouldn't have stayed under Luther because God was still building his church. And he came to sanctify his church by the message of John Wesley. Amen? And Brother Branham writing all these messengers. And over when he got to the seventh, he, put, he didn't put nothing. And there is the third one. The age of life. Why the age of life? Because it is the age of the baptism of the Holy Ghost. Because this is the third and last stage. What perfects us? How are we called the sons of God? Jesus was called the son of God. Now are we the sons of God. Why? Because the spirit of God is in us. He could never be called the son of God if the spirit of God was not in, our, in him. We are the sons of God if the spirit of God be in us. Because the scripture says in Romans chapter 8, if you have not the spirit of Christ, you are none of his. So we are the sons of God. This is that age. The power of God has come down again. He first proved that when he sent his prophet upon the face of the earth with signs and wonders of healing to draw just attention, to bring, to catch everything and bring them and bring us all together. And yet he was going to do this. Amen. So, we are in that age. So who had the message of the baptism of the Holy Ghost? Because Luther had the message of justification. And Wesley had the 
message of sanctification. Who heard the message of the baptism of the Holy Ghost? Amen. Do you see that? And the baptism of the Holy Ghost is the perfection. Amen. There's nothing beyond that. The age of life. The person of Jesus Christ now in you, putting you in service where you belong in the foundation, from before the foundation of the world. How God foresaw you and what he wanted you to do and to be in the manifold membered body uh, of Jesus Christ. Many membered body of Jesus Christ. So I, I, I kind of like because Brother Johnny, uh, he announced on Friday about the cleaning. And I was thinking, hey, I, I need to prepare for a service. And it, it's, uh, where I live, it's not just around the corner, I see. So I was thinking, if nobody, because he said there's one person who put his name down. And I was thinking, I tell you, that man is going to clean that place probably alone if people don't really have the understanding of how God works. Because everyone, we might want to be standing here. I, I'm not even enjoying it either. But we might all want to do what you think is what you like. But everyone has been called to do something. And that something is your service to God. And God probably has put you right there for that purpose. And sometimes he ticks in your heart to say you just need to go and do that. And what do we often do? We resist the Holy Ghost. Amen. Now we are winding down. Amen. Have they put the next slide? Now in the message, the seventh seal. Paragraph 229, uh, if it's there, you'll see it. Now, we will turn now to the eighth verse, or the first verse, I mean, of the eighth chapter of Revelation. So I highlighted Revelation chapter 8, verse 1. He says, I know you are tired. You probably are tired too. <clears throat> Just bear with me. I know you are tired. But now, just try to listen for a few minutes now. And God of heaven help us, is my prayer. We must remember that this seventh seal is the end of time. So, so you see, so this thing drew my attention, you see. <laughs> we must remember that this seventh seal is the end of time. Amen. Of all things. It's the end of time of all things. That's right. The things written in the seven seal book sealed up of the plan of redemption from before the foundation of the world, it every bit ends. It is the end. It is the end of the struggling world. We said everything is running into shallow waters. There is turmoil, there is perplexity, there is distress everywhere. Everything running into shallow waters, everything can tell you that we have nowhere to go. He says, time runs out. It's the end of struggling nature. Nature itself, earthquakes, cyclones. You know, you know, there's everything that is going on around the world, and people are just running around everywhere. You are, you are, you thank God if things are not happening around you. you just thank God. There is trouble and, and perplexity around the world. This nature is itself groaning. It also is groaning for its own redemption. This earth. He says here, it's the end of everything. It's the end of the trumpets. It's the end of the vials. It's the end of the earth. It's even the end of time. So when Malachi spoke that before the coming of the great and dreadful day of the Lord, I will send you Elijah the prophet. And we read then, we say, oh yes, when this one comes, surely this is the end of time. This is the end of time. Here it is. You see how God is doing his things. <clears throat> 
Now time runs out. The Bible said so. That's in Revelation chapter 10, uh, verse 1 to 7. Time runs out. The angel said time will be no more when that in the days of the, this great thing to happen. So there has to be something that God appointed that it was going to fulfill the ending of time. God had appointed that there was something that he was going to do to end time. And he always does it because does, God will do nothing but he does everything by revealing his word, sending his word through his servants, the prophets. He will do nothing upon the face of the earth. Amen. Everything runs out in this time. And at the end of this seventh, notice, is the end of the church age. Now, do you see that? It's also the end of the church age. It's the end of the seventh seal. Now, because... I don't want to explain that. But the seventh seal, I think you have all heard. The Lord Jesus Christ himself. What, that is why Brother Branham said, when you read a scripture, and you read it, and you don't see Christ, you did not understand it. Go and read again. Because the seventh seal is Jesus Christ. He is the person of the book. You see, that's why it took only him to open that book. Amen. It ends the seventh seal. Now, the seventh seal has been broken. He is unveiled before us. The mighty God unveiled before us. You see these messages? Because even that which was sealed is no longer sealed. He is unveiled before us. It's even the end of that seventh seal. Amen. Amen. It's the end of the trumpets, the end of the vials. Obviously, the, the trumpets, we know about that. And the vials, that's the, the, the judgments of the Lord upon the face of the earth. Amen. And even the ushering in of the millennium, that's on the seventh seal. So you see, when you read Revelation 10, 7, it's exactly Malachi 4. You can't separate them. That's why Brother Brown, when he's say, he saying, he says, this prophet that prophet, he, he, he can't separate them because they are their time is to do one thing, to end the world. One is from heaven, one is here on earth, and something is going to happen there. And that's what we have to read. Amen. Ah, uh, we are doing well. Time is still on our side. Paragraph 235. That's what this it just ends time for the world. So what is it then? We all know. It must be the thing that he said no man would ever know. Not even the angels of heaven. Neither the son of God himself. It has to be that secret that was kept from all time and from all ages. Because when it does to come and it ends the world, then it must be that time. You see, he says here, he says here, that's what the seven, it just ends the time for the world. So the second coming of the Lord is the end of time. It's the end of the world. But what does he come to do? The same thing that he did to the children of Israel when he came down. He said, I am come down when he spoke to Moses on that pillar of fire. I am come down and I'm sending you. And the God that was come down was sending him. So you and he vindicated himself that he was the presence of God that was accompanying Moses by that light. He went with Moses and the children of Israel even show. So that, that sign that God proved that I am here to do that which I promised Abraham, your father, that I will come and take you one day and take you to a land of promise, the land that I gave to your forefathers. And when he did this pillar of fire, amen. First, it was redemption by blood. 
because they had to sit, kill a lamb. And the scripture says, eat it all. Cook it well and eat all of it. Nothing left. Eat all of it. And the blood of this lamb put on the, on the lintel of your doorpost. So that when I'm passing, because I'm, the judgment of the Lord is striking Egypt tonight. So that when the angel of death is coming. Remember, the last enemy is death. This is the wrath of God coming upon the face of the earth. Death. Now, when he is coming, so that I will pass over you. Redemption by blood. Amen. They see, when he sees the blood, the blood that was applied upon your soul, when he sees that blood, he will pass over you. The wrath of God will pass over you. Oh, mercy. And when he turns around, sends them through the Red Sea, knowing exactly what he was doing, that he was putting them to a trial. <laughs> the Bible said, the prophet said, it dropped down into a space of time for the try. And look, when you read all the scriptures, God had to try every, every believer that came to him. He had to try him before he could accept him that I have accepted you. He gave a trying. He gave a testing. And when they got there, <laughs> brother, that pillar of fire, and Moses was now crying. And the people were crying, oh God, how could you be such a loving God? Who could take us and bring us thus far and cast us over here? That these Egyptians, we were better saving them than to die like this. And that same God, he withdrew himself from up over there. When they could see him, he withdrew himself and came back. And he became a wall. The scripture says no one could come near the other all night. And when he did that, he was now showing his redemption by power. For the word of God, for the gospel is not, comes not in word only, but in power also. In the demonstration of the spirit and power of the living God. Now there comes a time God has got to prove his power in our lives. This great high priest, we are on a journey, saying. So you see, he comes back. He now wants to show them that he is the God of heaven. There is none like him. And when he sits there all night and people are crying, <laughs> God is just laughing in himself. That <laughs> Just wait and see. Stand still and see the salvation of the Lord. Brother, all night he dried up a way. I am the way, the truth and the life. He made a way. The way that only God could make to prove to us that there is no other God besides him. The things that he has spoken, the things that he has done, oh, let us hold fast to our profession. Because there is no other way that is going to come. This is the message of the day. This is the message of the end. Brother, when he had opened the way, God made sure that, as he was said in his word, I will harden their hearts, these people. Because honestly, if God did not harden their hearts, who was going to go there? Do you think a normal person was going to just walk in there? Obviously not. But God had to harden their hearts and being hardened for his own glory. They thought, oh, yeah, let's go in there. <laughs> we'll catch them. <laughs> if they walk on dry ground, yeah, well, they have just opened the way for us. Rather, after that, there was redemption in joy. There was, redemption was in joy there. Because then after that, the horse and the rider had he cast into the sea. They sang and they danced. Look, in the house of the Lord, it is a house of joy. This kind of religion that God, does, God has called us is a religion of joy. Because God is not a misery God. He let them see his glory because he wanted them to be overjoyed by his power. And when they saw his glory, they started to dance and sing. Oh, the host and the rider, has he cast over in the sea? Just try to think when God has done just a little bit of a thing in your life. What does it do for you? When you have waited for it, when you have struggled and, and when you have knocked on the door and it sounded and it looked like God is not there. But one of these days, he just comes and opens the way. What does it do to you? 
redemption by power so that it could be complete in joy. God always wanted us to be joyful. We are his children. Brother, this is not made up. This is not psychology. This is the word of the living God. Just wait and see. Hey, Amen. I liked it when the brothers were praying. And I thought, oh, these brothers, they are already preaching the message. We might as well finish and go home. <coughs> hey, Amen. Now let's see here. Paragraph 236. I'll read 235 again. So we go down to 36. He says here, yeah, that's what, that's what the seventh is. It just ends time for the world. It ends time for this. It ends time for that. It ends time for this. It ends time. Everything just ended up on that seventh seal. Now, how is he going to do it? Amen. I thought you had this question before. I thought when we were starting this, you also had a question to say, oh, so, so how, is it, how is he going to do it? How did he do it? How is he going to do it? The prophet says, that's what we don't know, isn't it? <laughs> now, who do men say that I, the son of man, am? Some say this and some say that. But who do you say? Peter says, Thou art the Christ, the Son of the living God. He says, Ah, oh, flesh and blood has not revealed this to you. Only it takes my Father, who knows you from before the foundation of the world, to give you the revelation of it so that you can just know that what, the things that are just happening now, they were meant for you before the foundation of the world. He said, blessed art thou. You see, now let's see here. I'm just saying some things. He says, that's what we don't know, isn't it? We don't know. It's even the time for all these things and the ushering in of the millennium. Notice, the breaking of this seal was so great that heaven was hushed by it in silence for the space of a half hour. Now, is it great? What is it? It was hushed, heavens. There wasn't a thing moved for half an hour. Now you know these scriptures, that's why I'm not reading them. So for time. Otherwise we could go and read the scripture. I believe you know the scripture. He says, now, now this is the part I like the most. Now, a half an hour might not be long if you are having a good time. Who is speaking here? A half hour might not be a long time if you are having a good time. <clears throat> but in the suspense of between death and life, it should be a good time. It seemed like a millennium. It was so great. Now I'm thinking that this is a personal experience that I'm hearing here. A personal experience. In that half hour, something tremendous happened. And the prophet is trying just to air it out somehow. In the suspense between death and life. It seemed like a millennium. It was so great. God had appointed that he was going to put his enemies, his footstool. He was going to come down with the book. No one was worthy to open this book except the author himself. He had to come down. And there had to be a personal experience between the author of the book and his angel on earth. And that experience is what I believe the prophet is telling us here. There was a personal experience that he is this one. And look, when this happened, God then comes out and sends a 20 mile 26 mile wide or something like that, I, if, I'm, if I remember well, mystery cloud. Uh, uh, we don't have time to read everything, but you know these things. And when he says that, Brother Branham says, when we was on the mountain, there is witnesses here that were there. As Paul says, 
when Jesus Christ struck him with light, he says, there were men there that heard the voice. That they, they did not hear what was said, but they saw that there's something strange that has happened here. And he says, God did the same thing. There were men there to prove that something, the, what this man is telling us, something supernatural happened. We were there with this man. You see? God evidencing and witnessing, making sure that the things that he is saying to us, they, if you doubt it, that's up to you. But let's see it. So this is where I liked it the most. There was God, Revelation chapter 5, coming down with the book open. The same thing that happened is happening now. When the children of Israel, that pillar of light, when it stood there as a wall, look, the Bible says it was darkness to them of, of Egypt because it was judgment. But it was light to them. It was a time of mercy and judgment. It is a time of two great sins that are rolling out. The ending of time and the, wind, the rolling out of eternity. These two now are running parallel with each other. Because this is happening and that is happening. They are being cast into darkness because it is the judgment of the Lord. But we are being cast into light because God is coming back to harvest his own bride. Do you see that? He is walking up to end time, calling out the people for his name's sake. A bride without spot or wrinkle. Why? Time has come to his end. Now you see, my understanding of time is that one. I know there's a few questions, and I keep that because I like those questions, because I've got the answers. You see, anyway. So, the same thing is happening to us. Do you see when the lamb... When the angel that was speaking to John, he said, Behold, the lion of the tribe of Judah, the root and offspring of David, hath prevailed to take the book. That was what was announced. The king of kings, the author, the lion of the tribe of Judah, the king of the earth, has prevailed. That's judgment. But look, when John turns, he sees light. Because when John turns, he sees a bloody lamb. Because to you, it's mercy in time of judgment. The winding out of time. To you, it's mercy in time of judgment. The world is being judged out there. But to you, the, the Lord is spreading out his garment of mercy. Calling us, his children, home. Amen. Of course, I know there's nothing new. We are just repeating the things that we know. Probably just in a different way. Amen. So he's, he's actually doing the same thing. It's light to us. It's darkness to them. Amen. We're just going to read a few things, then we close. The next slide, please. We're not going to read the, the scriptures. We just read there, as you can see them. Did you notice? He showed himself by a pillar of light, a cloud, a ring of cloud up there, a mystery, something that the world at the time, the people around that, that, that place of Arizona, they witnessed a supernatural sign. God could not fail to do that. He, just listen here. I, I, I liked one portion of this, this uh, scripture that we are reading. Paul is speaking to Timothy, says, I give thee charge in the sight of God who quickeneth all things. And before Christ Jesus, Christ Jesus, who before Pontius Pilate witnessed a good confession, that thou keep this commandment without spot and rebuke until the appearing of our Lord Jesus Christ, which in his time he shall show, who is the blessed and only potentate, the King of kings and the Lord of lords. Who only hath immortality dwelling in the light, which no man can approach, whom no man hath seen, nor can see, to whom be honor and power everlasting. It had to be the light, 
that pillar of light. Because only one person dwells in that. He evidenced that he has come down. Because when he said, I am come down to Moses, it was a pillar of light. And he did the same thing on Mount Sunset in 1963. When his prophet was there, brother, these things are not made up, I mean, uh, stuff. This is the living word that is made manifest before our eyes. God making sure that there is no room for doubt in every way. God has loved us and called us by sending this man, William Marion Branham. Some people say, oh, he started preaching the church ages because he wanted to find a place to put himself. No, he didn't do that. The scripture spoke of him before he came. Amen. And the message, who is this Melchizedek? Now we see, uh, he says here, who is this Melchizedek but God? Now we see here plainly the complete secret of our lives in journey and death and where we go after we die. Also, predestination is in plain view here. Now listen as we teach this closely. The stages of the eternal purpose he had in his secret has now been revealed. There are stages to this. The stages of his eternal purpose, <laughs> of the eternal purpose he had in his secret, in his mind, amen, has now been revealed. Now, notice, there is still three stages to perfection. Just like he redeems the world, the same way he redeems his church. He redeems the people in three stages. Now look, faith is justification, like Luther preached. Second is sanctification, like Wesley preached. Third is the baptism of the Holy Ghost. That's right. Then comes the rapture. Amen. Who is this with the message of the baptism of the Holy Ghost? Where is the Holy Ghost going to come to gather a people like they were on that day of Pentecost? When the Holy Ghost came like a rushing mighty wind. Did you notice? The Holy Ghost came like a rushing mighty wind on the day of Pentecost and filled them up. Did you notice when he made the way on the Red Sea? The wind blew all night. It took the wind. He, he, he doesn't run away far, so far from typing and presenting himself the way he does things. You see? It took the rushing mighty wind, and yet the wind blew all night and cut a way through. You see, first justification, second sanctification, and the baptism of the Holy Ghost. Where, why are we talking about these things? The message of the hour is the only thing that will take you to the rapture. The message of the hour is the only thing that stamps you, the stamp of God, that you are in the rapture. There is nothing else beside it because there had to be a message and a, me a messenger with a message to bring the baptism of the Holy Ghost. And that's our perfection. Amen. All right, the next one is we are winding down to a close. So it is very important, my brother, my sister, when, when you come and you hear the message and we say, probably it's time you take a thought to be baptized. It's not that we want the, mom, the numbers. The idea is not ours. It's the word of the living God. These are the stages that brings you to perfection. That's how God operates the stages that takes you to your perfection. They start from your justification. The water baptism. You remember the quotation? We read that one. The water baptism. If you come here and you, you, you talk to someone and you hear the message, remember. That's why I told you the scripture about Cornel Peter in the house of Cornelius. 
He said, when they had received the Holy Ghost, same as we, who can forbid water? Why turn back if the Holy Ghost had already come, if water was not that important? But look, it takes those stages. These are the stages that takes us into perfection. So when we testify the message, we tell people, come and baptize. We are not trying to, to look for numbers. We have got nothing to do with that. We are just shedding the light of the gospel of this hour. Amen. Brother, this is for you. We heard it like the message we listened to. We heard it. We identified it to be the word of God. We received it and we acted. That's what you are called to do. Now listen. God vindicates that. That's always been right. God vindicates it to be true. Show plainly. You see? He vindicated it to be true by coming down on man, Mount Sunset. He had to show himself in a supernatural way to prove that if you doubt what that man is going to say, what are you saying about this kid? Do you have an explanation of these things? You see, God vindicating by signs and wonders. He says, that's always been right. Show plainly the predestinated is the only one that's considered in redemption. So when we spoke about redemption, when I referred to the children of Israel in Egypt, remember, it was only the children of Israel. There was no way an Egyptian would have found his way there. It's the predestinated. It's of the seed of Abraham. So here, it is the same thing. Redemption is for the predestinated. Why? That's why we spoke about time. Because sin brought time. But one day, God, knowing that someday he was going to do something to bring back that time space back to the chain of eternity again. And then she rolls on. Because time is what brought sin. So he has got to get rid of time to bring us back to perfection. Then the chain rolls on. So how does he do it? He does it in the stages of the message, the preaching of the gospel, the, birth, the rising of the, the birth of the church by the angels that he sent until this day by the prophet of Malachi 4. You see? He says here, yeah. did you get it? Let me say that again. The predestinated is the only one that's con considered in the redemption. People might be making like think they are, but the real redemption is those that are predestinated. Because the very word redeem means to bring back. Is that right? The re to redeem anything is bring it back to its original place. Doesn't that sound quite right when Jesus came on the face of the earth and he said, I came to seek and to save the lost? It was such a simple statement that them that heard it probably did not hear it with some understanding in it. But we understand now. I came to seek and to save the lost. Because you are in the wrong place. You are lost if you are down here. But I'm come that you might have life. Oh my. Amen. He says here. Yeah. <clears throat> Hallelujah. So it's only the predestinated will be brought back because the others didn't come from there. See? Bring back. How can you doubt that the others didn't come from there if you believe the prophet to be a prophet of God and the message that he preached about the serpent sea? Everything had to be winded up in this age. That's why there was none greater than this man to divinely reveal the word of God from Genesis to Revelation. Everything was caught, every mystery of it was caught up, brought up there. Now when he says the others, the others didn't come from there, you already have an understanding yourself? <laughs> Amen. I was telling my family that, you know, if you love your friends so much, and you love them so much. To show that you love them, you tell them the gospel. If you tell me that I've got a friend that I love so much, 
and you are busy about they telling them, oh, let's go and have some chips. Let's go. And there's nothing about the gospel you are telling them. You are a liar. <clears throat> Don't tell me that. If you love them with the love that you, I think you mean love, you are concerned about, you know what? <laughs> Time is fast spent. We are winding up. We don't even know when he is. Re remember when we read the scripture, he says after the baptism of the Holy Ghost, then the rapture. You see, this is the age of the baptism of the Holy Ghost. And for sure, there is no one who desires the baptism of the Holy Ghost who will fail to receive it because this is the age of it. If you ask God, he will because this is the age of it. You see, if you love your friend, tell him the gospel. You see how the disciples did it? They were friends, and they loved their friends. He first to find Peter. And the next thing, he goes to find Andrew. And the next thing, he goes to find Nathaniel. And he tells him, you see, we have found him the Messiah. But the friends of today. <laughs> what? Did you check that one? <laughs> Brother and sister, let us hold fast our profession. Let us hold, seeing we have got this great high priest that is entered into the heavens, Jesus, the Son of God. Let us hold first our profession. Run with people and not telling them the gospel and claim that you are a message believer. Something is not right somewhere, I believe. Because when they heard it, they acted. When they identified the word of God, they could not rest. They acted. There was, that was the only theme of their life, is preach the gospel. And we, here we are. We claim that, oh, I see myself, you know, Abraham's royal seed, and all this and that. Let us not make this theology. This is not theology. A good start of something, and a very substantial and understandable and all that. This is life. It must actually start springing out. And it must spring out and gush out and gush out, reaching unto those, and unto those. We are, we are not responsible for their salvation in terms of predestination, but we are responsible for telling them the word that this is the message of the end, and time is winding up. You have no more time left. Amen. I'm still happy. All right. The next one as we wind down. I still have a few things to read. I have to hurry now. Amen. So we've been talking about the Holy Ghost. So I found this one. Amen. One time I said to my family, of course, I didn't do the right thing, of course. I must confess, you see. I told my family I wanted to ask a question, and there was a price tag to it. The question was, what is the evidence of the baptism of the Holy Ghost? Shall we lift hands? Uh, without reading over there. Shall we lift up our hands without reading over there? You see? <laughs> Amen. But you see why I kept hammering on the fact that this, there had to be a messenger that brings the baptism of the Holy Ghost? It's because of that. <laughs> he is the divine revelator of the word. He is the interpreter of that word. So he has to tell us the meaning of everything about it. Amen. The Holy Ghost. This day, this scripture is fulfilled. The Holy Ghost is the word of God in you. The message of the hour that came, and you believed it. Amen. That word in you. Amen. That identifies itself. Now, it's no longer you identifying yourself. So you can't manufacture this one. No, 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 no. If you were trying, that's why you failed. You can't manufacture this one. It says, the word, when it's in you, it identifies itself. By accepting that word, amen, outside of that, it can't be the Holy Ghost. Hallelujah. Now, I'm not rejoicing because you are looking kind of sad or something like that. I don't know why you're looking like that. For me, I thought there was going to be hallelujahs. Because you know your lives. That, ah, I've been evidencing this one. Oh, thank God, I'm a true sign of the rapture. I'm a true candidate of the... But you look so sad, like, oh, this brother, who sent him here? 
Why did he ask him to preach today? <laughs> this is food for us. We should be rejoicing and rejoicing, thanking God for this. But people look so miserable over something like that. The word of God in you, that identifies itself. By what? By coming to church. Remember what the word of God says. <laughs> Amen. It says, outside of that, it can be the Holy Ghost. If it says it's the Holy Ghost, and it denies one word of that Bible, it cannot be the Holy Spirit. That's the evidence whether you believe it or not. Now, now, if you tell me that that is not quite right, then you are better than Brother Brennan then. But that's what it is. So we are being brought from justification to sanctification. The word of God that's being preached, it's purging us, it's sanctifying us, it's cleansing us. This sister, you can't do this. You can't live like this and, call, and be a Christian. That brother, you can't walk that way and call you and be a Christian. This, my brother, helping each other out, the word of God, pruning and purging us up unto our perfection. Unto our perfection. The ceiling time. Amen. He says, yeah. All right. Let me move on quickly. Outside of that, it can be the Holy Ghost. And I believe that too. Do you know why? Because Eve didn't believe just one word. And that was, that's what brought all this chaos. It was one word. That's why the prophet puts it exactly like that. It was one word that brought the whole thing into chaos that we are. Do you see? If you can't believe one word of that Bible, then you don't believe the... I think there's a scripture which says, guilty of one is guilty of all in the, in the, in the Old Testament. If you break one, you have broken all. You see? So if you can't believe one, you, are, you can't say you have. So, but I'm not, say, I'm not here to judge people that one is God, one is No, 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 I'm just reading so that we judge ourselves. The scripture says when we come to the communion, he says, judge ye yourselves. You see? We come to judge ourselves. Amen. The scripture, uh, uh, <coughs> he, he, here is another thing. The next, the next uh, slide. Brother Branham in the message says, is this step, that the sign of the end. Remember, when this was coming to fruition, there was visions, and there was dreams, and there were six dreams, and the vision kept it, he said. And then he preached this message. And in the message, is this the sign of the end? He, he, he refers to this one. He says, he speaks of the mysteries. It is the time of the revealing of these seals. Of these mysteries, the mystery of this, the mystery of that. I just took this because we are referencing to our age, the age of the baptism of the Holy Ghost. You see? I took this one. L now listen. He says, the mystery of the baptism of the Holy Ghost without sensation. But the per person of Christ performing in you the works that he did. He is performing in you. So that word will evidence itself in you by accepting that word. He, it, it, he is performing in you the Holy Ghost evidencing that you are a candidate. Now, he says, the mystery of the baptism. Now, the baptism of the Holy Ghost is a mystery. And it is broken before our eyes. It, he says, the baptism of the Holy Ghost without a sensation. Now, remember the, mystery, the ministry of the prophet. There was two signs. And there was a third and last sign. The ministry of the touching of the hand to pray for the sick. And the ministry of the discernment. These things we have always had. One in the natural to touch the body. Second in the spirit, discernment. And third, the word to quicken the seed to life. You see? Now, he, what is the mystery of it? Because remember, in the body, they all got a sensation. In the spirit, they all got a sensation and jumped up. But when the word of God comes into the soul, remember, Brother Branham says, before the opening of the seals, he says, he's talking about the trying human being, and he says, he first was putting it in, in 
body, soul, and spirit. And he said, the mind is the womb of the spirit at the time. But later when the seal was broken, he turns around and he says, body, spirit, and soul. And then he comes around and he talks about the baptism of the Holy Ghost in the soul. You see? And now that baptism of the Holy Ghost is without sensation. It's just coming back to life. It's just the quickening time. And that's why it shook the Pentecostal away. They couldn't take the word. It was good when Brother Branham was healing the sick and raising the dead and all signs and wonders. It was so good when he would tell them the secrets of the heart. It was so good. But when the word of God, that should call them back home. The word that came to call them back home from where they came from, they couldn't take it. But you and I, if you mean it, my brother, my sister, but you and I, we are seated here today because the word quickened our soul. A baptism of the Holy Ghost without sensation. It then identifies itself. It's a life. If it cannot be lived, it is not there yet. You see the secret of it? By their fruit, you shall know them. Amen. Another type here. He says, uh, who is this Melchizedek? Next slide, please. He says, you see, the Samaritan was actually from my last sermon, last night's sermon. That was Hagar, see, a perverted type. And the Jew was Sarah or was Sarahite. But the Gentile is of Mary. The royal seed. Abraham's royal seed. Just imagine when all this time Abraham's royal seed is going to come today. We are that Abraham's royal seed. And from there on, the scripture then declares, you are priests and you are kings. And from there on, the scripture says, you are joined as together with Christ. The royal seed of Abraham. Because it's all by seed. Amen. Now this is the last one. We thank God for the service. I just put this one to close the service. Who is this Melchizedek? And the church has got its last sign before the whole world is going to be destroyed. This Gentile kingdom be destroyed by the fire and wrath of God. Do you believe that? That's Malachi 4. That Melchizedek was flesh. Represented himself in a human body. And then later, he was made flesh. And now tonight, he is the same yesterday, today, and forever. Do you believe it? <laughs> now we cannot help each other out there. But, but I like this one. I put it right there at the end for a purpose. Melchizedek came down. He says, he was made flesh. And represented himself in human flesh. And, was, and now, tonight, remember the message he is preaching is who is this? Not that. Who is this? But all things are given to us by revelation. Who is this Melchizedek then? That's the same yesterday. Never had no father. Never had no mother. He never had no beginning of days. He never had an end of life. He met Abraham. And what kind of a sign did he perform? Then he was made flesh. He said it would repeat again just before the end time. Do you believe that? He said, I believe it. Amen. The word of God can never have effect unless we believe it. Amen. May the Lord bless you all saints. Amen. Uh, brother, if you've got a song, as we call Brother Johnny, I would appreciate it.
molded every day. Let your word be born in the manger of my heart. Let your word be born in the manger of my heart. Let it live in me. Let it shine. you saints as as brother was preaching then i was thinking about my testimony i was thinking about where i was born i was thinking about how i was raised i was thinking about how i went through denominationalism i was thinking about how the the condition i was in i didn't know it but an indictment had been spoken the whole time all of the systems that I was in, there was an indictment against those systems. <clears throat> when I came to the message, when I came to the message, I saw love, mercy, and grace. When I came to the message, the word of redemption was born in my heart. So though he had appeared as supreme judge, and the judgments had been spoken forth. When I came to the message, I found love, mercy, and grace. When I came to the message, he called me an eagle. He might have called the next person a buzzard. But for me, the message called me an eagle. For me, as a woman, as a bride, quickly he came and planted the word of redemption, the seed of redemption. Quickly the male came and planted his seed. And we found grace in the time of mercy. Could you imagine Esther, as brother was mentioning those quotes about the seventh seal, and it talked about a time, in a good time, it, but in a time between life and death, it felt like a millennium. I was thinking of Esther. Could you imagine Esther now coming into the presence of the King, knowing the consequence of doing that? How it could have felt for her, it was between life and death, but then all of a sudden, the scepter was extended and she found grace and mercy. So this little bride, this little bride, when she come into the presence of this King quickly, in the right hand of Him that sat on the throne, quickly a book was open. Quickly the seed of redemption was planted. Quickly she found life she found grace in a time of judgment. 
the message of the hour and what it means to the one that is a part of Jesus Christ himself. She found love, mercy, and grace. Brother Pardon, thank you so much. God bless you for laboring. God bless you. Can we sing, can we sing that song, I found love, mercy, and grace? Lord Jesus, in our own selves, we do not deserve any of this, Father. We were not looking for it, Lord Jesus. We had no concept of it, Lord Jesus. We were in all kinds of things, Father. We were in denominationalism, the darkness of chains. We were out in the world, Lord Jesus. We were in, in, in a terrible condition, lost, without hope. But Father, all of the sudden, Lord Jesus, your voice, your word came our way, Lord. And all of a sudden, Lord Jesus, we found ourselves looking, beholding the very face of God Almighty, our Lord Jesus Christ. And Heavenly Father, we found love, mercy and grace and something on the inside of us Lord Jesus identified itself by receiving and accepting that word and we are so thankful Lord Jesus 
for that experience, Father. We are so thankful, Lord Jesus, that now we are conscious of eternity on the inside of these bodies, Lord. We are conscious, Lord Jesus, that when Your Word came, we believed the Word of the Lord. We are conscious, Lord Jesus, that there is something on the inside, Lord Jesus. That little eagle story, Father, it echoed from the inside. And Father, we are so thankful for your reaching down to us, Lord God, and connecting us back to that eternal person, Lord. And Father, we are, we are conscious that you are doing something for us, Lord, from the inside out. And you are going to complete this picture, Lord. And this body, this natural man, that is still subject in time, you are going to quicken it to the same place that our soul is right now, Lord. Father, your prophet preached souls which are in prison now. But Lord Jesus, we do not identify with that. We identify with souls which are in heaven now, souls which are being quickened now, souls that have found their place in this great King Theophany, this great Melchizedek, this great Word that has been revealed, Lord. And we are conscious, Lord Jesus, that You know that we are still in these time bodies. But Father, the very Word that we have eaten, the very Word that has quickened our souls will bring a complete redemption, to wit, the redemption of our bodies. So, Father, we thank You for these things, Lord Jesus. We ask You, Father, to make us more conscious, Lord God, of these things, that we are just not an ordinary person going in and out through our daily routine. We are not like that, Lord Jesus. We are called and separated, Lord, and we are a people with dual citizenship, as we've heard preached, dual citizenship, Lord Jesus, and help us, Lord, to become more conscious of the heavenly citizenship as this earthly citizenship, Lord, fades away. We thank you, Father. We ask you, Lord Jesus, to go with us now as we to our temporal homes. Be with us, Father. Continue to minister to us, Lord Jesus. Bring back to our remembrance these things, Lord. We thank you, Lord God, for your, for your servant, our brother, Lord Jesus. We ask you to continue to impart to him, Lord Jesus. Continue, Lord, to, to bring him into that prophet's tent, Lord. Bring us all, Lord, into that prophet's tent, Lord Jesus, under this third pool ministry, Lord Jesus, that we may be sticky with the goodness of God, sticky with the honey of God, with the revelation of God, that others around us, Lord, may lick and be blessed by the goodness of God. We commit ourselves now, Lord Jesus, into your hands in the precious name of our Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. God bless you, saints. <clears throat> just as we dismiss, can we just sing the song? Um, let's just sing the song, Give Thanks with a Grateful Heart. Give Thanks with a Grateful Heart. <clears throat> Give thanks with a grateful heart. Give thanks to the Holy One. Give thanks because He's given Jesus Christ.
Jesus' name.